right, it's a different format today. Um, kids are in bed, wife's gone out on board, so I thought I'd put on the camera and uh, video a industry story. I'll try to tell you. This is going back a bit. I was a first year apprentice. Um, me and an electrician were sent out on a job to uh, install some lighting in, in, um, in a barn in the middle of a field. There was no electricity supply there. The idea was that the farmer was going to come along with his um, generator and plug it into the consumer unit via a commando plug and uh, power the system that way. So if I can just do a little sketch just to show you. So this is the barn. And here's the light. I think there's about three or four high bay lights in now. I can't remember. It's a long time ago. And here's the consumer unit. And we um, we put in a an earth stake just for completeness. So we did all our dead tests. We did our, our um, R1 and R2, like it's supposed to, and our insulation resistance and all the readings were good, what they should have been. So at this time, uh, the electrician that I was with, he phoned up the farmer and told him to come along with his uh, generator so we could uh, finish off the tests and test the system out. So the uh, farmer come along with his little truck. What uh are? -oh. There you go, and the little generator on the back. I think it's a low power generator. I think it's one kilowatt somewhere along the lines anyway. Anyway, so we plugged it in. There you go, via a commander socket, and we powered it on, and we tried to complete our live tests. Like, uh, you know, you've got your ZE. Um, I think it was a 16th edition board. It's a garage unit, I think, at the time. It was RCD protected circuits. And uh, we tried our RCD, but we was getting nothing. RCD wouldn't trip, and we was getting no um, external uh, loop impedance. Now, if you, the electrician at the time I was with, he didn't know what his um, what the problem was. He was scratching his head, and I think uh, in the end he said. Um, I think what it is, son, he said, I think it's that stake, it's in dry ground. I think what we need to do is take the stake out, put it in some wetter ground. So that's what we did. Still, still nothing. No, no ZE, RCDs wouldn't trip. And um, at the time, I didn't have much of a clue. I was probably in my third week of trying to become an electrician. I was just there as like a dog's body doing all the, all the, uh, all the leg work. So this old boy was getting on a bit. Proper old school electrician. You would have thought that you would have known what the problem is. So, as you know, as you should know, if you're um, an apprentice electrician at the moment, that you you need a loop in order for current to flow. That's why I call it a fault loop impedance. The problem is that um, generator is not referenced anywhere, is it? It's just floating. We reference this side, but to what? You know, the source is coming from the generator. And we were just getting no uh, uh, fault loop impedance. The only way around it was was um, if we to like earth the uh, neutral side of the um, the winding on the uh, generator and stake that down to ground. We'd have found that uh, the system would have worked. You know, we'd have had that earth fault loop impedance. We'd have had a ZD and we'd have been able to uh, trigger our RCDs. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if the job ever did get fixed because uh, the, uh, the following day after that I was on a different job with another electrician but to my mind I don't think it did get fixed and to be quite honest I don't think that electrician knew what he was doing. So there you have it, that was a, an industry story that, um, that may have been useful to any of you guys that don't, you know, in the same situation uh, you're not understanding why. So, where can this lead? What can we talk about now? I know. I think what we talk about now is uh, electrical separation. Same sort of thing, because that's electrically separated. Electrical separation on a shaver socket and why it is a no-no to have two pieces of Class 1 equipment plugged into the same system. And I'll show you now why. So we draw our windings. 
Excuse the crudity of the drawing. I'm no Rolf Harris. <laughs> um, so that's what you're looking at as a, a shaver socket in your average domestic dwelling. So you've got the um, the source side is earthed, so that basically be your electrical insulation in your house. And this side is always floating in like a shaver socket electrical separation. So we put this into a unit and we just have one socket coming out of there into a shaver. We have our little stick man having a shave and there's a line to casing fault um, on this shaver because it's a faulty shaver and um, as it is now the um, the person Bob we call him will not feel the um, won't feel the electric. He won't have an electric shock. The simple reason is he's earthed as he is. He's in he's in a bathroom. He's at a swimming baths actually, and he's earthed there. But this side is not referenced to nothing. It's floating, so there's nowhere for the fault current to travel. It'll just stop there. Um, through body capacitance, there may be. Um, tiny bit of current flowing but not enough for you to perceive it so the way that system is at the moment that is that's absolutely fine that's the old idea of uh, electrical separation but you, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't get electric shock if there was a a line or neutral fault uh, so now what we do now we draw the same picture with two um, outlets and we have two people shaving so there we go, so that, that is the installation side. This is the floating earth side. So again we put that into a socket. Two sockets coming out. So we got Bill down here having a shave. Though, you know, he's the best of friends. I go swimming uh, twice a week and uh, at the end of their swim they have a shower and have a shave together. So we got Bob here with his shaver. Remember, Bob's shaver has got a line fault. So we're earthing. He's got a line fault. And here's Bill. So this is Bob. And this is Bill having a shave. Hey, and as it is at the moment, Everything's fine because Bill's uh, shaver has not got a fault yet. But you've got to remember is that these two shavers are, they come from the same manufacturer, and um, they uh, hypothetically speaking, say let's just say that they come from the same manufacturer. And there's a manufacturing fault with them that after a, a month or so of use, uh, there becomes insulation breakdown on the live conductor and it goes to case. But as it is at the moment, Bill's is fine, so he has a shave. That's fine. Following week after they have a swim come out again have a shave but this time Bill has a line to case in fault what do you think's happen now as it is not a lot at the minute because that's because uh, effectively at the same potential because they've both got a line to case in fault but there's one thing you've got to keep in mind with shavers they are non-polarised basically, it means that you can put them in the socket that way or that way, it doesn't matter. So this week everything's fine until the following week after that, let's say Bob, no, no actually let's just say that Bill plugs it in but this time he plugs it in the opposite way which would give him a neutral fault. Now that's where the problem lies, They're, that it effectively that'd get a shock. Effectively what's happening is, let's just see if you can still see that, yeah effectively what's happening is that, let's draw a little system here, so effectively what's happening is because Bill's got that neutral fault, he's effectively referencing this point, the neutral side, to ground because remember Bill is um, Bill is grounded, he's, he's wet, it's a wet condition remember because I've just got um, the showers and they're in the, uh, the shower shower room having a shave. 
So effectively, what's happening here is that Bill has referenced that side to ground, the neutral side, and poor old Bob here, he's um, he's uh, he's got his line fault, you see, and he is going to. He's going to get himself a shock, or both of them really, because you've got a, a you've got that earth fault looping pins like I was talking about in this one. So effectively, uh, the line is going to go through there, through the casing, through Bill, through Bob. Sorry, this is Bob, and then up through Bill. So there you have it. That's why two pieces of Class One equipment i.e. the shaver, socket, sockets, shouldn't have two items of class 1 equipment. And the same apply, f apply to, um, for instance, let's just say you've got a floating generator, say, on a construction site, and you've got two items of class 1 equipment plugged into there, but these pieces of equipment are polarised, like a 13 amp socket, say. Um, you, you would require a line fault and a neutral fault um, to get the electric shock. But, as Murphy says, whatever can happen will happen, Murphy's law. So there you have it, I hope that uh, you can understand that, and that's just a quick thing off the cuff. And um, I think that'll do for today. So if you like this uh, this format, I'll do another one. Uh, totally unprepared for it. Um, so there you go. Thank you.